in this video we're going to talk about polygonal light panels okay so as you can see I have just a sphere here and we have no lights in the scene whatsoever okay let me change this to off a of trackball rotation and when in the render tab you can see we can't see anything so we're going to talk about adding light panels so let me go into my polygons and select these first few faces here okay let me just run a script real quick to make this a circle you all don't have to worry about this this is just for demonstration okay so now I'm going to bevel this I'm going to make sure my polygons are grouped and I'm going to take it back in like that spacebar to drop the tool now I'm going to do a loop slice with a mode of symmetry count of two around through here just to tighten that up a bit okay now as you can see we have this little hole in our sphere here so I'm gonna take these, pan these, these polygons here and I'm gonna light them up so I'm gonna select them and hit the M key and I'm gonna name them inside light say okay that's gonna give me a material for those in there so I'm gonna go to my shader tree turn down my render tab and I'm gonna pick that material inside light there okay so I'm gonna select that material I'm gonna change my diffuse amount to zero that'll change it black okay Then I'm gonna go to my material trans and take my luminous intensity up I'm gonna make it about 10 now as you can see that lights up that panel now we're having this little bitty light here you can see but that really don't look like much okay uh, honestly it's just you can see that lighted polygon there but that's all we can see so let's add something we call a photometric light and you can download these off the net for free from GE or anywhere like that so let's go to our item list and say add new item photometric light okay so these are IES files you can get from anywhere and I can even you can get them from me I might if enough people request it I'll host it and as a download in the description so I'm going to pick any one of these photometric lights. All of them have different shapes. All of them have different intensities and different softness and different looks. So you just have to experiment. I'm just going to grab a random one and say open. Now this lit up our scene completely. You see that? Because now we've got that photometric light in there. This must be a really strong one. So I'm going to select my photometric light. Make sure I'm in item mode. And I'll hit the W key. And I can move this photometric light around now. Okay. So now if we go back to our render tab look there look what we got now we've got this wonderful soft photometric light coming out of there now all we would have to do is orient this light to the center of this and this lighted polygon would look like it's emitting this photometric light um, just as a brief example the closer I get with the photometric light the more intense you see that it's getting now remember each photometric light has a different shape to it has a different look to it. Let's turn this thing around completely like this and let's back it up. Just to give it a little bit of light there like that. Okay, let's go back to our model tab. Now we can add a new item. Let's add an area light on top of that. Let's go to render let's go to item mode and let's adjust our area light rack it out a little bit I want to concentrate that area light in the center there so it looks like that light is really glowing but our it's kinda fuzzy so if you remember one of our last videos how do we how do we fix that let's go to our shader tree pick our light material or our area light and let's up our samples I'm gonna up it to 512 look at there didn't that just smooth that out completely so let's render that and this is going to take a little bit longer um, so let's sit here and let this render and we'll see you in a second now as you'll notice our scenes lit a lot better we got a little bit more look now this is just fast deal here our shadows look a lot better okay so let's just go ahead and turn on our global illumination okay 
Now, <clears throat> a radiance rays, this will help determine the accuracy of your lighting in your scenes and stuff. And your bounces too. Now, if you just got one bounce, the light is going to come out and it's going to say this, this light here that's pointing towards this sphere. Okay? Let's go ahead and pick our photometric light. And as you see, when we adjust it, we get different results. If I turn it completely around like that, we're going to get a real bright light there. Okay. I can push it in closer. And now, as you can see, what we're getting here. If I push it in real close. Okay, now let's grab a real quick render. And we'll be right back. <clears throat> now, as you can see, we're getting a really hot glow in the middle there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and abort the render and we'll continue on. Now, as I was saying, the bounces, let's go back to our area light or our photometric light, whichever you know whichever you're working on at the moment here's the radiance how bright it is you can turn the, how bright it is I'm gonna turn it down to 10 so it won't be quite as bright and there's a lot material in this one as well so let's go back to our area lot here and let's look at a few things everything looks fine there let's go back to our render tab and let's continue on with our global illumination talk and bounces okay the light coming towards this sphere the area lot right here that's in front it's going to fly out and it's going to hit this, these polygons and it's going to bounce off of it once. That's it. One bounce. It's, it's going to hit it and it's going to stop. It's going to just bounce back black. So the light is going to come forward, hit this wall, and when it, that, that's the first bounce. Since it's only got one bounce, indirect bounce, it, will, it won't bounce backwards, okay? Imagine somebody shooting a gun and that bullet hitting this wall and that's the only bounce it gets. It hits it. And it don't bounce back. That's, that's the only bounce it gets. But if you turn it up to maybe two bounces or three bounces, now, as you can see, we're getting a lot more lighting uh, detail because it's hitting the wall. The bullet is coming out of the gun and hitting these walls, and it's not terminating after the first bounce. It's bouncing back and hitting them, this polygon here on top. These pixels are coming out and hitting here. That's the second bounce. I've got it set to three bounces. It, after it hits here, it will bounce again. It will back out, okay? And it does this for every single pixel. Every single pixel throws out a ray. And this ray, these irradiance rays, each pixel, I got it set to 256, each pixel is throwing out 256 rays. And those rays are set to three bounces. So each individual ray will hit a wall, it will bounce, hit the next wall and bounce, it will make three bounces. If I made it 512, each pixel would shoot out 512 rays. Okay. Um, is there anything else? The indirect range, if I set this up to about one, let's say two meters. This is the, um, the range that the, the illumination is going to, it's not going to go no further than that. If I'm, if I'm explaining that right. So now let me render this out. with our bounces set up and our indirect range at 2 meters 512 irradiance rays <clears throat> now if you uncheck irradiance caching you're going to do what's called the brute force method Monte Carlo is what it's called okay and um, it will go ahead and forcibly just brute force render the the, um, the scene this irradiance caching can give you a really good looking scene and we can get into the effects subsurface scattering and stuff in other videos. So this is a brief explanation of photometric lights and how to turn your polygons into light panels. So you can see we've ended up with a fairly clean result. Um, and I'm happy with that. Of course I would like to tweak it a little more and we could. But photometric lighting is really really wonderful it can add real life to a scene and 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 photorealism to a scene 
and your radiance caching and your global illumination is very important when it comes to that quality. Remember, each pixel is shooting out 512 radiance rays. Those radiance rays are going to hit whatever's around it and bounce back that color. Like if I had a blue wall and it bounced, it would bounce back a little bit of blue reflection. But if I had it set to one, it wouldn't bounce back blue, it would bounce back black because it's just set to one bounce. So the more bounces you got, your the more radiance rays you got, the more accurate of a render you may get. But it could slow down render times and stuff. And this is our first video on lights. We got several more. This is just kind of made to get your feet wet. So I look forward to getting into the next video and we'll see you then.